The No Man's Sky Waypoint update version 4.0 is here. Let's talk about that. All the patch notes right here in the LZ. My fellow travelers, you have arrived in the LZ by plane or train, or you're probably watching this on the toilet, just like you're going to be playing the Nintendo Switch version of No Man's Sky here starting today. And in this video, we're going to talk through a high level of the patch notes for the No Man's Sky 4.0 Waypoint update, and some of my initial impressions. Review to come later. I'm also picking up my Switch Edition later today and hoping to have a quick review out sometime next week where I will probably endlessly brag about how I was right and all that other jazz about the Switch Edition. I had to do it sometime. Without any further ado, scrolling on the screen is the patch notes for our Waypoint update. Check the description for the link to see them yourself as well. But we're going to kind of speed through these because honestly, it's not a giant update content wise. But rather, as Sean Murray hinted at uh, earlier in the week with my previous video, that this was going to be more of a content realignment. And essentially, that is really what Waypoint is. Now, if you're clicking this video and you have been away from No Man's Sky since launch, or maybe you've picked it up once or twice and it just kind of wasn't your deal, this update is probably more for you than it is the existing No Man's Sky player. There's a lot in this update that really does a lot to sort of realign your play experience to kind of try to address some of those issues that some folks had with the game in general. I don't know that this update is really going to do a lot to make it your cup of tea, but maybe a better tasting cup of coffee, right? It's, uh, it's well, I mean, let's just talk about it. First off, I think personally, my impression so far, the, the best aspect of this update is the custom game modes. The ability to sort of tweak your own experience, right? You don't like the grind, you can minimize it. You don't like stupid features like scanner reach charging, which I think is probably the dumbest thing in No Man's Sky, if I'm being honest. You can fix that, right? You can change and customize your sort of depth of your experience as you please. There's a relaxing game mode. For players like me who like a little bit of a challenge, survival mode has been expanded a little bit. Auto saving has been added to the game, which I hear really kind of cripples uh, some of the folks who like to play the game in an exploitative manner. They added a trade rocket to the game, uh, which honestly is kind of cool. I haven't really figured out sort of the utility of it yet. Like, I know it's to sell things from off-world to the Galactic trade stations, which, okay, is cool, but I haven't had the time to come to the realization if this really is an effective feature yet. It really is fun to watch in action, though, if I'm being honest. Now to the more controversial aspect, the biggest change that I think is already kind of rocking the No Man's Sky community. It's very split uh, for the existing players so far. I'm seeing some negative feedback, positive feedback. Uh, I'm still trying to figure it out myself, but really what they do did is they went in and realigned the inventory. There are visual improvements and enhancements, but to be fair to Hello Games and players of No Man's Sky, especially those who are just kind of jumping in uh, new to the game, the inventory organization previously has always strive to be good and never quite gotten there. Before the 4.0 update, you had like four to five inventories and most of them had sort of an organization of sub inventories. So it is super easy for people to get lost in the inventories of No Man's Sky. You have a suit inventory, you have a starship inventory, you have a freighter inventory, and then you have to deal with technology that's mixed in with those inventories. Uh, it's just kind of a mess to somebody who kind of wants their experience to be a little more organized. And inventory in games can either be great or be awful. Uh, and there's not a lot of in-between, right? Or you just don't have an inventory at all or a very minimal inventory like Silent Hill 4 or something like that, right? That just kind of is like, here, you can only hold 10 items at a time, hashtag deal with it, 
you need to visit your apartment again. Whereas in No Man's Sky, it's like Goldeneye, where you can carry everything under the sun to a degree, and then you have sort of overlapping inventories, cargo inventories, technology slots. For all intents and purposes, this is an improvement. But from my initial impressions so far, it is one step forward and two steps back. Because from my initial impressions, and again, I need more playtime with it. This is not effectively my review of 4.0 yet. But the two steps back means that, and this is weird because I kind of got my wish and sort of come uh, a couple of my previous videos, I had said that technology needs to be removed entirely from inventory. It, it just kind of plugs up the works. Um, I did like the sort of mechanic that you get for kind of matching your inventories up. And again, I haven't had a lot of time to play with it, but from the initial reactions that I can see and sort of my initial playtime with it, this really deals a blow to technology. It deals a blow to sort of how you min-max your level cap. And the patch note says that it kind of effectively raises the level cap. Uh, it might. And again, I don't have any experience with it yet, but from what I'm seeing is it, it doesn't give you a lot of power to sort of overlap and sort of overly max out. It, it just, it doesn't give you a ton of space. So I'm curious to see how this works. My sort of vision that I had talked about originally was when it comes to technology, let me do it at the ship and the part level, right? Let me go into the engine and boom, there's engine upgrades. Let me go into weapons, boom. Now I can manage weapon upgrades. They're still effectively part of the inventory screen. They're just locked off to where only technology can go here and only cargo can go there. I see what they did here, but it kind of reduces the experience of the overall upgrade challenges that you do uh, and how you sort of max out your ship. It, it kind of streamlined that a little bit much. And from the initial impressions and from my impressions, this kind of needs to be expanded on a little bit more. I'll play around with it a little bit more and uh, include an initial review starting probably next week. Of course, Nintendo Switch got a launch on this update. More on that probably next week on my official review for that game. PC folks continue to eat good. That's the footage that you're seeing here captured on PC. AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution is here. This is great. More ways to tweak your PC experience is always great. They did make some graphical changes, some atmospherics to the anomaly, some little bells and whistles. Always welcome. Drop pods now have more of a mission structure to them. Uh, I don't know how I feel about this. Uh, I get what's happening, but they're they're making you work really hard when I can just go get money and, and buy suit expansions. Uh, so I, I'm, I guess I love that the options are there, but this change to drop pods is uh, here or there. 4.0 also comes with a Twitch campaign. Uh, a lot of the most recent updates in the last couple of years have come with Twitch campaigns. So uh, get to watching those streamers so you can earn some rewards. There has been the addition of story records, and the catalog comes with a better explanation of what you've done on the journey so far. Uh, the lore in No Man's Sky is kind of hard to follow for somebody like me that has... <laughs> <laughs> and not a very deep brain when it comes to subtlety, which, you know, No Man's Sky's story really is a lot of that. This log does a great job of sort of documenting the story so far in your journey, which is always nice. Crafting trees have been added. I haven't really had a, a chance to experience this yet, but the, de the detailed steps for crafting complex products can now be visualized as a tree, allowing explorers to collect and prepare subcomponents in advance. So this is really nice because... Because if there is a particular device or super expensive thing that you want to craft to sell to get a lot of units, you it's kind of hard to understand what is needed to do that. And often, you need to craft another super expensive, super complex piece of equipment to craft the thing you're really going for. So the tree is really nice because it helps you to be like, okay, I need this, I need that, I need that. Um, it really lays it out for you, which is really nice. The previous large update got uh, an expansion to Asteroid Fields, which was really great. Uh, they added rare asteroids now, which is kind of cool. I'm hoping that they kind of expand on this a little further. Really, it just says right now that they contain a range of new and rare exotic variants, but it doesn't really say what kind of comes out of that. 
So I need to take some time to try to find some experience, kind of what rewards and what these asteroids produce. They made some changes to milestone guidance, some changes to accessibility when it comes to ease of use, right? Those of you who want to play in first person but get motion sick, you can reduce or remove the first person head bob. Reduction of a lot of communication station icons on your screen. Cursor control is improved. We mentioned survival changes earlier, and hardcore explorers can test their metal in a new ramped up survival mode featuring a greater breadth and depth of challenges to overcome in addition to quantitative balance settings, such as fuel consumption and hazard intensity, explorers must take care to repair their technology from damage and rely on their own harvesting capabilities rather than shops to acquire key survival resources. Interesting. Uh, I am definitely a survival player, so I'm kind of tempted to start a new survival save just to kind of get the full experience of what this looks like. Some quality of life changes like additions or changes to scanning. Uh, It takes for freaking ever to scan things, Uh, so it sounds like they've Uh, accelerated the speed of that. Movement upgrades for the jetpack have been made more powerful. Procedurally generated technology modules now stack in the inventory. Waypoint changes look better for your analysis visor. And traveler graves now do something other than advancing your portal uh, glyphs, which is kind of nice. Cooking recipes have been added. I'm not much of a person who prepares food in No Man's Sky. Some of you might. This is interesting. When you're disassembling technology, they're now giving sort of a technology package that allows you to sort of trade those with friends or maybe move those installs better from ship to ship. Um, That's kind of a neat addition because right now, if you disassemble uh, technology, they just kind of give you bits and parts uh, and that you kind of got to work towards reassembling that technology again. They made some graphical changes to things in space and the anomaly. I think I mentioned that before. Dramatic Atlas changes. I haven't been to the Atlas yet to see what those are, but uh, they're visual changes from what I can see and nothing really functionally changed. The ability to name your save, which is really nice. Uh, There's a lot of folks who like to create a lot of saves and it's nice for them to be able to track that. I am hoping that this is sort of a prelude to cross save and cross progression. That would be very nice. Hello games. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And that about does it for our breakdown of the patch notes there. So far, Waypoint is proving to be an update that is sort of putting up the welcome back sign for folks who have tried No Man's Sky in the past and kind of found the experience Uh, a little bit off-putting or a little grindy. So this is a good chance for those uh, those folks to have another try at No Man's Sky and enjoy the feature set a little bit better. However, uh, I'm interested to see how the No Man's Sky community is going to drink this update in particularly when it comes to inventory changes. Look for my review for this particular update and the Switch version separately probably into next week. And thank you so much again for stopping by the LZ. See you in the next one.